Just had to go to Detroit today. <laughs> Somebody's in Ottawa, Canada. I think it's the geek. Somebody had to go to Orlando. I just drove down an hour and 50 minutes. Here I am, Melanie. Um, you know, typically this is the point where I tell my story, but I've heard, I'm so bored with my story already. I thought I would just get right to you. I know there are some specific questions that you wanted to ask, and this is sort of the Q&A section. So, um, uh, feel free. I think there's some questions that are already ready to go. Does somebody want to read those, or do we just want to put our hand in the air and put a microphone in people's faces? So, you guys tell me. <coughs> Don't come down. I don't like being up. Uh, question. What's the first one? Don't be afraid. Okay, we'll kick it off. The first one is, what inspired you to get started? What, where did you start going, oh, I want to be, I want to be healthy. I love this. I want to be healthy. Um, well, I was living in a van down by the river, <laughs> and I didn't like it. Um, you know, I was a terrible athlete as a kid. I had a speech impediment called cluttering, which meant that I spoke so fast that all the words would, the words would pile up on top of each other. And so, you know, kids would notice that and make fun of you and take your lunch money and shove you in the locker and beat you up the bus stop. Adolescence. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was a rough start. My father was in the Army and I was an Army brat, so I moved a bunch of times before fifth grade. And, uh, it was, you know, I mean, who had a sort of a rough type childhood? I mean, just, anybody? Anyone? No? Everybody, well, mine was awesome. My parents were a pastor and a nun, and I turned out great. <laughs> Mine were a crack addict and a murderer. Um, my parents were awesome. But, but, uh, but, you know, it was a little rough for me. And so I was an athletic. I played tennis and I skied and, and whatnot. And, but, um, and I was on the football team in high school, but I was more of a tackling dummy, really, between Monday and Thursday. Just somebody to run over. And uh, but I discovered exercise for the first time, really, sort of a, um, I, I, as we would think of it, uh, and you are at University of Rhode Island, I took a little bodybuilding course. Yes, Rhode Island. <laughs> Go Rhode Um, The Ocean State. And I did this uh, weightlifting course, and what I liked about it, I mean, it was different than any uh, coach I had, you know, football coach or tennis coach, who just cared about win and loss columns. They just cared about, they, they worked on the athletes that were naturally great, the ones that had good work ethic, the ones that were, uh, you know, winning tournaments or winning games, and everybody else was just sort of on the, on the sidelines, which is kind of where I was. I wanted to be a good athlete, but I didn't have any coaches. And so when I took this course at URI, this guy was funny, and he was cool, and he was, and he showed us the steps, and he told us to do some version of our best and forget everything else. And I went, oh, that's cool, let's do that. <laughs> And uh, I enjoyed myself. Like, I actually enjoyed going to the gym and pumping iron and, you know, tracking my progress. And, you know, as a, as a college sophomore, uh, my main concern was more of an aesthetic shift. I didn't care about energy or endurance or core or balance or flexibility. I just wanted to meet chicks. <laughs> ah, I know I haven't developed a personality yet, but look at my arm. <laughs> Do you want to be with me? And uh, they really cared about the personality things, so that came later. <laughs> and, um, but I was really fun, and I just felt a little my confidence. And little did I know that I was changing my, my mental and emotional state. My grades went up, ironically. I paid closer attention in class for some reason, um, uh, because I was releasing norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, all the good stuff. Um, Brain neuronic neurotrophic factor. These are things I learned about in John Rady's book, Spark, years and years, decades later. But I did, I did understand that all of a sudden I was happier and I was more joyful. And I, I mean, my diet was spot on because I was a college student, so it was usually, you know, just hot dogs typically, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner hot dogs. And um, <laughs> but uh, I did notice an early change. Then I moved out to California in 1980 to become uh, some version of Jim Carrey and Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, so I had little success there. I mean, I was in a couple. I was in a little brow commercial. I did a couple of small parts of the movies and some TV shows. But being an actor in LA, I mean, everybody there is supposed to be one, and it's really hard. And, uh, and I had an agent, though, so my agent said, you know, I had a little belly, I had kind of scrawny arms, and they said, you know, you're in California now, man. You need to shave off that uh, 
Rhode Island State Trooper mustache that was like out to here. <laughs> like Wally Finger, I had this thing. I hadn't seen my lip in like five years, so I shaved that off and went to the chin. And, uh, and I, you know, I just really enjoyed the culture. I mean, and back on the East Coast, you know, there were gyms at the high school and on the college campus, but they weren't everywhere like they are. You know, everywhere else in the country now. I mean, there were always gyms and cardio gyms and bodybuilding gyms and CrossFit gyms. I mean, it's just awesome now to have some classes. Or stuff you can do at home. Thank you. <laughs> Better. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, then I, then I started working at 20th Century Fox. Long answer to this question. <laughs> There's no more time for any more questions. There's not even any more time for me to finish this answer. Um, but to make a long story good, uh, I was working at 20th Century Fox and I was a PA there and I would, you know, make the coffee, and live the scripts, and do the cats, and do whatever. Um, and uh, my boss uh, asked me to start the training because it was a super, super stressful situation there. And he got in great shape, and he stopped making movies, and I was starting to build my fitness business. And he was walking down the hallway at East End Management, and Tom Petty was walking the other way. Um, and he sees Harlan and says, hey, Harlan, you look, Tom's from Gainesville before. You look great, I'm not in fat, me and my wife are fat, we got some shit going on tour. I need to run, run down the green is what I need to. <laughs> Still good, okay, man. You know, okay. And so, you know, the next day, it's in my book. Who owns my book, The Big Picture? Yeah. Holy, who does not read me? That is the single most embarrassing thing. Ever. <laughs> Go blow Amazon's mind, all right? And just for some reason, 100 people are going to order The Big Picture, The 11 Laws That Change Your Life. Right? So, who's read that book and actually she took me to change? Right? So, you know the story, you're on the board, you know the story. So, what? There it is. Let me show you. There it is. Do it! Buy it! Now! <laughs> so, after on your test meeting here, when I was in a C-17C, and I threw up seven times in uh, Okinawa, Japan, that was very intense. You know, a lot of doors open up because it's not turning to beach body. But, anyway. So um, I trained Tom Petty. I got an amazing shape for this tour. Then Billy Idol called. Then Annie Lennox from the Origins called. Then Bruce Springsteen called. Then Hugh McGregor. Then Usher. Then Sean Connery. Sean Connery and Sean Connery. I've There you go. You got Tom Petty with Sean Connery. Don't make me do Arnold. I'll do it. 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 So, you know, then I had this little fitness business and I was, you know, I was acting and then um, I got some jobs with Nordic Trek, uh, you know, from Minneapolis a couple times and so I was a trainer and also an actor so I could actually, you know, walk and chew gum and hit my mark and look like somebody who exercised. That was a great platform. And then I met Carl Michael. I met up to a mutual friend. He was working for another company. We did Great Body Guarantee. Does anybody own a Great Body Guarantee? Two people. <laughs> How about this? Let's blow Beach Body's mind. <laughs> we got a thousand orders for Great Body Guarantee. <laughs> Model of the blue. <laughs> but it's really Debbie Sievers and I, and they know Debbie, one of our original super trainers. I'll be missing because she's such a sweetheart. But, um, but uh, she's not doing other things. So we did this great body guarantee, and it just was very, very unique. There were 15 minute workouts. Uh, there were about six of them. I was in hers, and she was in mine. And we ran out of money, and so we couldn't shoot indoors anymore. So we got out of the beach without a permit in the fog. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, and Carl was like, Cut! Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then that was really what launched the company, I mean, to a certain extent. And then there was Power 90, and I was living in a, an apartment for 21 and a half years. 21 and a half years in a three bedroom apartment, which wasn't bad. I had an office and I had a gym, one room and I had one bedroom. And, but I was looking down at the Count Lester home, which I was sure I was going to move into. <laughs> right down the stairs, across the alley. Where's my wheelchair? You know. Um, but Power 90 blew up, so we sold about three or four million copies. These home people said, Tony, move away from there. A bigger house is the place you ought to be. So, <laughs> I went from a little apartment to a little five bedroom number, which was pretty awesome. And, uh, and I've moved even since. So, you know, the journey's been pretty amazing. And that's how I got going. You know, it really was, the short answer is, 
I wanted to work as an actor, and I didn't look right, and so it was purely for aesthetic reasons. And then I started training, and people noticed my physique. I mean, that is your calling card, especially in this industry, you know what I mean? You're all, if you want to be coaches, if you're lean and you're fit and you're strong, then you're going to A, be the walking billboard that you need to be. And if you're not, people are going to go, okay, well, technology ain't working for you, so why the hell should I do <laughs> so, so it's kind of that, right? So, um, <laughs> in the black tank shop. Hi, if you could plant one message in all of our brains that we could wake up in the middle of our like, oh, what would you do? Um, one. Oh, damn, that would be a hard one. Um, you know, uh, uh, anybody know Brendan Bouchard? Is Brendan Bouchard? So he's, he's going to be our keynote speaker at Summit to find out over here. I made that call, by the way. I told Jeff, so, you know, he's just Brendan Bouchard. Of course, nobody tells me until I get back over here. <laughs> so, you know, Brendan is a high-performance coach. And so what he does is he creates formulas for people so that they can create a transition uh, that they'll stick with. You know what I mean? So I always say, do you best to forget the rest, to show up, the more you do, the better you get, the easier you get. You know, I got all kinds of things. <laughs> um, but the point is, is to take the brain that is inside of your noggin and learn, learn new behaviors so that the stuff that's inside of your brain that is not working goes away. And so that the new information is something that you actually, actually apply to your life, not for 30, 60, 90 days, but for the course of the program, forever. I mean, I'm a forever guy. And so at 18 years in Beachbody, somehow I'm still relevant. Like somehow I'm here and there's not six people in the room, you know. Um, I don't think it's solely for me, but I think because, you know, it was, Great body guarantee, Power 90, P90X, X2, X3, 10 minute trainer, you know, uh, one on one, hardcore. It was a new program we're, we're doing now that we'll launch in November. I can't tell you right now. Lord, <laughs> but, you know, we've got some rehearsals and, and we'll be casting soon, and I think it's going to be, there's nothing like it in our, in our library. And I think it's going to be just fun, fun, fun. You thought it'd be 90X facility with those smash your face and pterodactyls? This is going to be America's Fitness Clown right here. And we're going to have fun and we're going to have fun. We're here. That's how we're going to do it. We all know that exercise sucks. We're going to fun. Right? That's the only reason why this stuff sucks. 90 days of butt kicking and eating right. I want to do it again. Why? Because he does a stupid thing when he does <laughs> um, Yeah, so I don't even know if I answered that question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know if you can see. So, other than us being a good example for our entire family, what else can we do to get them? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You can't do anything. Can't do it. Can't do it. Um, great question, and I get it every time. Uh, you know, here I've made this great transition. I understand the importance of beach body. Psychology's changed my life. The programs are great. I thought like I had more energy and enthusiasm. I sleep better. My sex drive rocks. You know, all the great things we want in our lives. Um, any ten-year-olds in the room? Mommy, really? Awesome. Anyway. Um, but you can't change people who aren't very willing to change. The worst kind of advice to give is the kind that hasn't been asked for in the first place. So stop. Doing that because what happens when you do? How do they receive that information? Poorly. How's that working out for most of you? Terribly. Dump their life. Doctor, how come it hurts when I do this? Because it's a stupid thing to do. You know, it's a bummer. My mother died before her time, and I, you know, you don't understand. And blah blah blah. It's not your life. Don't tell me how to do it. I mean, you get all this kind of, you know, you're speaking French and they're hearing, you know, Ukrainian. Okay, not there's anything wrong with that. But they're just not hearing what you're saying, and they'll go on their own time. You have to live by example. You have to be awesome, thin, happy, cheerful, adventurous, excited, powerful. That's how I have to be. You have to keep that around all the time. And then eventually, people will be drawn to you, and more and more will be drawn to you, and then maybe the people that, you know, especially family, it's such a bummer. You know, it's like learning a new word, and then you put it in a sentence, and you expect somebody else who's never heard that word before to know what it means. Oh man, you look at Packer Medellin today. What? You don't know what Packer Medellin means? What a loser. <laughs> I learned it 14 seconds, seconds ago. What's your problem? You know? It's just, you know, you learn it when you learn it and you share it for people who want it. Next question. 
Yes, ma'am. Person loves money. Who's person B? That's wrong. Well. <laughs> Who's this 50 pounds to lose? What program do you represent? Who's this 50 pound person? So I got a friend? Person A. Person A wants to lose 50 pounds. Which program do you want to tell me? Uh, which program does that 50 pound weight loss person do? I, I say next three is always a great place to start. Yes. Three next three is a half hour. Um, here's, here's the, and by the way, Jeremy Yost lost 180 pounds to the Yes, I didn't make the program for a guy who weighed 380 pounds, but he did because he modified it. And he showed up, and he didn't judge it. He enjoyed the journey, and he wasn't perfect, and he didn't care because he showed up. You want the answer to that, what's the one thing? Show up. Consistency is everything, right? I mean, if you want to be fit and healthy and happy, it's five to seven days a week for the rest of your life until you're either burnt and spread over a pond or you're in a box. That's it. Five to seven days a week forever. Because if you don't, if it's three days a week, that means four days off. Do the math. Who wins? The four days off win. So it becomes a very frustrating process. You end up with exercise bipolar disorder. Gotta work out today, it's gonna be really great. Took two days off. Why do I want to murder my family? You know? Because <laughs> It's the, it's the same thing as alcohol and drugs, but in a different way. We take alcohol and drugs so that we can change our state temporarily, so that we can kind of phase out all the other stuff in our life, but then what's the consequence, they say? You feel like crap. And so you repeat that horrible process over and over and over again. Short-term pleasures for long-term pain. What is exercise? Short-term discomfort for a lifetime of awesome. My wife loves hard work. It's the one she did all the way through. It's the one she got the best results from. You know what I mean? Because she likes to get some.
45 in one minute. Top that. Yes, how are you, sweetheart? We're in four thousand. Um, what am I reading or listening to? Nothing. <laughs> Read it all. Keith Ellis, Gary Zukoff, Richard Carlson, Tony Robbins, Joe Simpson, um, Gary, uh, John Krakauer. You know, my library is filled with personal development books and adventure books. But presently, I'm, I'm working. I'm working, working, working. I'm doing Brendan's right right class. Who's uh, going to check out our little session on Tuesday? You guys all get that? Really? No? Raise your hand here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go talk to that person. <laughs> so Brendan and I, Brent and I are going to launch our course. And uh, that was a lot of work, you know, a lot, a lot of work. And then uh, trying to retool the 22 minute hardcore. All right, that's, that's actually the new one. It should be airing this weekend. So put your channels, buy them all on, damn it. And, um, <laughs> And then my course with Brendan, which actually launches on the 10th, which I'm really excited about. And, and my who has TH Care? Anybody have TH Care? One, one, thank you. TH Care is my skin and hair care line. Of course, Beachbody loves that I'm here talking about, but. <laughs> they call from Carl and Carl. Seriously, dude? I'm in San Diego. I'm going to check out of you. Yeah, it's just, I have to leave that skin and then moving out to California from Connecticut because in Connecticut it's sunny for like, you know, an hour the whole year. And then I was out here, you know, it's at the Bacon so I would burn myself. And uh, I just went to this company and said, I got my hair is straw, I got an alcohol. Have you seen anything like that? Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's hair oils it's, and conditioners and shaving cream. Go to TonyHortonLife.com. If you don't go to TonyHortonLife.com, who's a skier or snowboarder? Then you should all sign up for the last remaining 15 spots on the, to on the Tony Horton Ted McDonald. Jackson Hole Yoga Ski Retreat. You, that's the, it's, on, it's a February 8th to the 12th. It's our fifth annual. It is smiles, so many smiles, so much joy. What's that? Child can go, yeah, you know what I mean? Just put them in the corner. Let's go. <laughs> a couple more questions, a couple more. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hey, I, I, man, I love hanging out with you guys. Spread the news. Everyone to know, nobody gets better. Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, relationships, it all gets better. Ooh, hey, I was to see my student with a speech in Canada. Look at me, he's standing in place, it was terrible. <laughs> 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 to my father, yeah, actually, good question. She was saying this was 22 minute hardcore struggle. Homage to Pops. Um, you know, I didn't serve, I grew up in the 70s, which is really more about being a beer, it's called Pop, less about serving our country. Not that I did those things in the 70s. Maybe. But um, you know, I didn't serve, my father did. And I, I saw, you know, I saw his service to our country. And because of this experience with each body, and you know, I, I, I was invited um, my first tour, right? I've been to 51 military bases in the coast of the South Korea. Ready for Japan, thank you. Um, if you're on my Facebook page or YouTube, you'll see my you know my adventures around the world. And uh, my first tour was uh, in Italy, I was at Camp Darwin, in Camp Darwin. And then uh, I was asked by uh, then Colonel Stephen Shepard to uh, uh, work with his guys at Andrews Air Force Base, which is where the president's playing in helicopters hanging out. That was just fun. To, he turned four tennis courts into a big P90X workout room. So it was kind of fun to do it live. Um, and then from that point, I, I started working with the Pentagon, and um, AFB was just our force to maintain. And we just, you know, we're all over the place. And Susan Lucy uh, is a, a gal. She's a coach, one of my sisters. She does all my domestic tours. So I just got back from uh, um, Utah Air National Guard about three weeks ago where we got to get up in a KC-135 Strato tanker. These are words that I would have never said. <laughs> 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 K-35 Strato tanker. We were fueling us with that six feet. At 30,000 feet, going 500 miles an hour. That's, you know. Uh, so that's just really been cool, you know, just working with the military. Any chance I get, I go. Um, you know, my wife and I uh, were in Hawaii and Kona, and the Golden Knights uh, were in Chinook, and, and there were some young astronauts uh, that were on top of the Kona, the mountain up there, pretending to be on Mars for a whole year. Like, they couldn't even go outside of the little zone. If they did, they had to put up, you know, put on a uh, space suit and everything. And so they were doing P90X and reading my book to each other for six months of their year time on fake Mars. 
Uh, every day of that. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so they, they said, they contacted my wife and they said, it feels like Tony's our sixth astronaut. Would he like to do our simulated re-entry to Earth to bring a back to the bottom of Chinook? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> It's not, it's not on my box. And my wife said, I'm going. Uh, so there you are, you're standing on the edge of the shoe. See that skydive? You skydive. So if you have not skydived, the person in front of you, like in your brain, you think they're going to fall away like this. Right? They don't. They go like this. <laughs> like, see ya, and then a speck. What? Like, like you were shot out of a gun. velocity, two people. Right? So that was the next guy. So the whole thing is run that should have open up like this, like two helicopters, loud and gay, just tonnage in the air, somehow and we're in the air. And then you go like this. And when I, I went from here to here in the helicopter was like this. Like, damn how fast. But you don't know this, you know. Then you pull the chute. And then you pull, you can go, oh, we're fast, right? This is easy. Then you pull all the way down and you spin. Yes, back there. How much time do you have? I'm good. That means we're done. <laughs> I can do this. Over. Time is taken for you to grow and learn. Now, you have a speech by a coach, you're sort of inundated with a bunch of brand new information, you know. I, I see the opportunity, Tony used to be cool, uh, show and tease, you know, help me out, uh, Shakeology certainly made a difference. But now you're asking people to change their diet, change their behavior, uh, create this business, um, begin to focus on areas of their life that didn't even know existed, maybe weeks or a month before. And so that transition time is condensed uh, into a very you know, short period of time. And so then you have to, you know, your why is everything. Like, you know, I always talk about exercise. Um, it's about purpose, you know, and what happens, you know, whether it comes, whether it's your relationship, and I talk about this in my course, whether it's your relationship, and the same rules apply to all areas of your life to some degree. Of course, there's nuances, but, you know, when it comes to your relationships, right, you don't have good relationships either. If people aren't going to kind of be in your tribe or understand what you do or, or enjoy who you are, then you have to begin to go, okay, uh, how much more time do I want to actually spend with you? You know what I mean? And then you have to look for new people. Oh, and usually after high school, most people are like done. You know what I mean? I got all my friends, so I'm fine, I'm out, right? So, but still, me, I'm the Eddie Lacey's a new friend, and I've got new friends all the time, and I just discovered that my life opens up. So, you have to be willing to make that sort of jump. All right, so eliminate the people in my life that are sort of bringing me down, even though they're friends and family I've known for a thousand years. You know what I mean? If they're your husband or wife, well. <laughs> Then you drag them. I mean, you know, I'm talking about advice you're not supposed to give. You gotta drag them take them to see who's there. You just do. Who wants to allow me to marry them? Holy smokes, right? I mean, my wife and I, our whole thing is support. Support, support, she supports me, I support her, we're done. We're, it's awesome. We had a fight yesterday for the first time in a year. It's like 10 minutes long, it wasn't even a big fight. Like, I was taking down the car and, and it was making sprinkles everywhere, and she said, you're making a big mess, and I go, how would I supposed to know that the scene was gonna disintegrate? <laughs> <laughs> He goes, wait, da, da, da. I said, well then, let's vacuum this. What's this mess? All right, and so, and the movie said, well, my God, that's our first fight of the year. I go, yeah, oh my God, that was, let's never do that again. <laughs> um, and the same thing with your business. You know, your, your why has to be so profound, so direct, so specific, so awesome, so clear. You have to have badasses around you. You've got to have a ridiculous plan. You've got to be as consistent with that as you are going to work, as you are waking up in the morning as you are dealing with your kids in the right way. It's, it ha and if it's not that it's half ass or it's 30%, then don't do it. Don't be here. Just go work for the man. You know, get in the traffic, you know, park the car, walk to the office, get in your cubicle, and type for eight hours, and then go home and just punch yourself in the face. Because <laughs> we don't have to do that. There is an obesity crisis that is off the chain. Off the chain, and we are here to fix it. So, you know, for example, find a program and do it all the way through. Find a damn program and it's probably one of mine. <laughs> Seriously, I'm 58. Come on. <laughs> so, a lot of the girls are going, I don't want that. 
like sheepheads. I don't know who it is. <laughs> and so he tore his triceps muscle. And he wrote getting emails to me, hey man, I know how much I love you this big, but I guess I better stop doing this. And I wrote back, no. <laughs> Hello, I've been telling you for how many years? So guys want to build, gals want to burn. One dimensional. What is P90X? Multiple dimensional. What's X2? Even more so. X2 is a skill-based program for athletes, where if you start on day one, and on day nine, you still can't do a single rep on half those exercises. Perfect. <laughs> it's called learning. It's called growth. It's called transition. If you can half do something initially, well, no shock after three weeks, you stop getting results. Find the edge of the envelope and live there with good form. You're going to be learning and transforming into something you never thought possible into your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. That's what it's about. Build and burn, 1970s and 80s. Boom! Crap. You can do it sometimes, but think about getting an elliptical for 45 minutes. I, I would rather, I don't know, slam my knee pad to all the <laughs> Drill calls, muscle recruitment. Burpees, muscle recruitment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so get uncomfortable and modify. That's how you, you really change. And so speed, balance, range of motion, flexibility, and agility. That's what athletes want. That's what you want. And by the way, the after effect is everything you want. Without spot training parts and just doing one thing or another. So, when it comes to finding a program, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, thank you. Those are great questions. <laughs> thank you.